Hello everyone, we're back with another episode of trying to cover some top players and get their opinions on various matters. Today we want to be talking a lot about experiences, weapon choices, and flexibility in a competitive setting. And joining me is going to be one of the most experienced and flexible players out there. This is PK Fuzzy. Hey guys, how are you? My name is Fuzzy. I uh, am a competitive Splatoon player now for, since the beginning of time seems like, 2015. I played on... Uh, Team in Splatoon 1, NSTC, we're considered the best team in the West for a little while. Uh, in Splatoon 2, I was on a professional team, STDX set to destroy X, uh, which most of you guys would probably know me from. And Splatoon 3, not really aiming to be one of the best players, just around hanging out, uh, trying to like bring the level of the entire community up, whether it's playing or coaching, stuff like that. All right, so let's just get started. So first off, I know that a lot of players are still struggling to try to find like what weapons they want to play. Maybe they change it a lot or are unsure what to do. So what would you recommend as an outsider player? Is it better to just kind of stick to a few weapons, a specific role, or is flexing a lot of different things okay? I would say that if you are a player on a team currently and you guys have your player roles, um, if your weapons aren't already predefined, if you didn't already come in as a like a ballpoint player or a machine player, splash player, like whatever your role is, I would play those weapons that fit within that role. Uh, if you're not in a team, then it's just whatever you like. You could do it however you want. Within a team though, I'd probably stick within a role to keep like uh, some sort of continuity for all the map and mode combinations that you guys would be playing. Yeah, so having like dedicated anchor player, not switching like who would play your backline if you had like someone different with an X-Flosher than your ball point player trying to have them be the same user could definitely help a lot with consistency. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. On this topic, something that's a bit more popular in Japan, but still here we have quite a few of them, are one tricks, or people who just specifically play only one weapon, try to push it everywhere, pretty much every map mode in the game. We, that's gotten a lot of controversy over the years, especially at higher levels, with stuff like Alliance Rogue having Volti do mostly Carbon Roller. What do you think about people who one trick weapons? Is that okay? Or do they need to have some form of flexibility? I think uh, even in your example, Volti, he definitely does have some flexibility. Like, I knew him as a Carbon player in Splatoon 2. I never don't think I ever played against him there, but when I first fought him in Splatoon 3, he was using Machine, and I was really, really impressed. So, no matter what, as a one trick, you should definitely be able to do something else. But in general, if you're a player, I think it depends on your aim, uh, your goals, like within yourself and maybe your team. You know, it's, a lot of teams aren't accepting of like one trick, so it, it's restrictive in team building. It could be really detrimental on a certain mode, for example. But I like the idea of it because. It just creates a lot of diversity in the scene. I think if you're a team that has a squeezer player, for example, and that squeezer player just loves the weapon, they're great on it. it if you guys are, let's say, your plus two level team, and you're getting you know decent results in tournaments, and you guys decide to swap to splash or whatever meta weapon at the time, and you're still seeing the same exact results, honestly, I would just stick with with one tricking i don't really see how just going to the meta would make your team better or your players better in any way i think like eventually maybe you never know like maybe squeezer gets buffed or whatever weapon gets buffed and all of a sudden now you have to you're so, so far ahead like you have the super advantage with the guy that's been dedicated to that weapon through the ups and downs uh, i i think it could really like push you guys all of a sudden all of a sudden you guys are in plus one or winning a tournament you know something like that yeah, and speaking of that, we've seen a good bit of teams, mainly in Splatoon 3, that decide to just kind of strictly run meta. They'll only play, like, some of the absolute best weapons. Like, these would be teams that just only played Splash and Machine those few months ago. Is this a positive, or do you think that going just purely meta with no amount of flexibility can actually be a detriment, especially with a lot of patches in the game? As far as a team goes, those individual players should always have other weapons that they're playing casually or in pickups or stuff like that just to keep themselves fresh and they could play to their like the full meta that they need to for the same reason i said before as the game has patches you don't want to be stuck like oh i only played machine for the last three months like i didn't even play it any other weapon outside of my team and now all of a sudden you're really lost or stuck and you could have a weapon crisis and your team will struggle for a little bit and i've in my experience watching and playing splatoon like 
a couple bad weeks or bad months could totally derail a team and their their momentum that they had. Once the meta is solved, like the early Splatoon 3 meta got solved with the splashes and the machines basically as dominant forces, like pretty much only those two weapons now with ballpoint a little bit, I think it's all right. If you know for sure that's the best strategy, uh, you might as least at least try it to see if it works for you guys. Speaking of which, we've talked a bit about a solved meta, but currently we're in one that's more unsolved and that'll probably happen again in the future with patches over the next year or so. So how do you decide what weapons are worth picking? Are there certain attributes that you would always want to see on a weapon or not want to see? How do you kind of decide what to run when what the best weapons are aren't exactly clear? I really like this question right now uh, for, for the state of the game uh, that we're currently in. I could Because I'm also experimenting with this. Basically, it seems now the only weapon that is definitely 100 percent the most powerful thing is inkjet so pretty much ballpoint maybe you know rapid deco is solid and no nova could be solid for just the jetpack rapid is solid not really due to jetpack but it also has it but you can't really spam it besides that it seems that the community has settled on yeah so zap as a counter pick to jetpack it based the cooler deaths basically mitigate the effect that the jetpack has it's all about like spamming a special getting double kills or triple kills and completely turning the tide of the match however if your respawn is one second then you you, you guys are in no trouble you're just jumping right back in no problem by the time the jetpack lands uh, to its recall position you're already back so if we take a team core like a very common team core now as a ballpoint plus a zap one because jetpack is still the strongest special but also like the most popular counter that we're seeing right now in cooler what's going to be in front of those weapons and as of now it's really really fun to try and figure that out so what i've been doing personally is just taking basically every weapon that i could think of that would be a strong main weapon i'm not really concerning myself with kits too much right now because the strategy around it is so reliant on just inkjet being so singularly powerful that maybe we could just run powerful main weapons in the front so i'm looking at squeezer i'm looking at nautilus um vds uh, not that it's so sing the main weapon is not as obviously strong but the mobility and chip damage that it has maybe survivability with the rolls stuff like that a v dually uh to have crab still uh 52 is seeing a lot of play we could potentially be shying away from dominant kits the splash and machine fizzy booyah plus the main weapon splash had the extreme amount of paint the weapon has perfect accuracy burst crab was dominant it's possible bucket is another example of a weapon that the main weapon is just very powerful even though Splat Bomb Triple Ink Strike isn't so dominant, powerful enough on the front line. Having multiple lives with Cooler, uh, being able to just keep up the pressure on the front really changes the dynamic and the pace of the game. So it's still a work in progress, but I think we could definitely be seeing a ton of combinations for frontline weapons in conjunction with uh, a Cooler and Zap in particular. Yeah, I agree. I've also personally had a lot of success with a bunch of different combinations compared to previous metas. It's very interesting to say the least mm -hmm, for sure yeah you could just do anything seemingly almost like map dependent like just try something out i think every team should be trying stuff out like it, we, we could really be seeing like a very interesting era like uh, until the next patch so moving on from weapon specific another thing you've talked about a bit is play style and one thing you've mentioned that's very important in terms of this is being able to change your play style on specific weapons you play rather than just being able to change the weapons themselves so what do you mean by this exactly this idea that i had really originated from watching the splash and machine dominant meta where splash and machine were weapons that could like realistically do everything you could slay with them you could be on the front line you could anchor machine not as much but splash you could paint a, a ton uh, as we i'm sure we've all seen these weapons that were just super powerful like overwhelmingly powerful they had way more options than some players gave themselves credit for so basically in terms of having a different play style within a game or a set like if you're a splash player still now with splash you, you could still do it obviously the a lot of the burst bomb nerf the very very minimal paint nerf all the crabs nerfs it's harder to do anything at any moment but you still could to an extent where basically your role within a team can fle be flexible based on the game situation at hand uh, you know lots of players are aware with splashes that they could 
do an aggressive or a defensive crab, but there's more than that. You could go based on map. Let's say you're you're playing one map, it's uh, Hammerhead Bridge, and the next map is uh, Scorch. You might have a totally different game plan. Like maybe you're not able to be under a ledge on Hammerhead. There's not as many ledges. So as a machine player, you might have to be playing further back or further up even in order to get to the enemy side. Or on a, a different map, you may be able to play uh, underneath ledges very easily and basically based off map terrain of uh, your own team composition enemy team compositions you have to be able to be flexible enough to understand first of all that it's possible because a lot of times you're a slayer on a team so your only goal in mind is to kill the opponents or you're a support on a team so your only goal in mind is to paint around but those things can change second to second minute to minute if you're a support player playing splash but you have a crab and you happen to find yourself on the opponent's side like you could obviously crab up in an aggressive position and, and if you're last alive but you're playing a slayer weapon it doesn't mean you have to go fight them immediately you could uh, hide it, uh, give your team jumps back up in the middle you could still provide enough uh, distraction to give your team a chance to just respawn normally if they can't jump in I think in general it's it, obviously I'll, everything I'm saying it's it's super generalized it's, it's really hard to see without maybe a visual but uh, I, I really just want to see players and teams um, rid themselves of like uh, specific team roles within themselves uh, and be able to be like a, just a more flexible player in general. Like I don't really see the best teams in Japan ever saying like I'm the support player, I'm the frontline player. Like it, it just as the game develops, the situations and the resources at hand dictate what they should be doing instead. That's a really interesting thing to note. And yeah, I think being more flexible and not being too tied to this identity of I am only a slayer, I only go for kills, that kind of thing is extremely important. Yeah, Starburst in the Splash and Machine meta, you know, Ice, Bagel, Biscuit, and Bran, they really blended their roles well. Um, but as the metas change, you know, with ballpoint it became more specific and now we're seeing particularly right now the identity of a team is based off its zap player and how they like to play some zaps are very defensive kind of like splatoon 2 getting just spamming armored like junior style and some zaps are always with their team fighting and you could totally see the difference it, it changes the entire team dynamic based off how the zap plays currently so even just that it's like if you're looking for one thing currently you could see an entire team's identity based off of their zap player and how they're positioned. I forgot the tournament exactly, but I remember it was Jackpot going against a Japanese team and there would be Clicks who would play much more defensively, kind of like he did in Splatoon 2 about getting a lot of coolers, and Jared would just do three mains of Quick Respawn, have some of the highest deaths on the team and play much more like a front line since they had a stamper without Quick Respawn for the second player, and that kind of very sharp difference in zap styles I found very interesting. So on top of just roles, do you think that counterpicking for many different weapons could be more important as this game goes on? I know we've stretched about flexibility a lot, but is it really important to kind of have those swaps available? There are obvious counterpicks that everyone is uh, more or less aware of. Um, for example, missiles against charger um, and then charger against splatlings. So for example, if you're playing right now and you just keep into a game with your ballpoint, and then the opponent has a charger. That's uh, a horrible matchup for all splatlings, just you know, regardless of which one. Ballpoint, even with jetpack, you know, even with the buffs that it receives, still could just get slanked out of the sky pretty quickly. So you might, the very next game, just want to play Wiper Deco or Flingza and just hang out in the back and, and uh, spam missiles at them, which is a tried and true counter we've all seen. Um, but there's a lot of other counter picks. It, it goes into the style that I kind of talked about before. Maybe uh, if you're playing Splash and the opponents are like really playing a certain way, whether it's fast or slow, you could switch your gear. You could play a special charge up Splash, or if you already were doing that, quick respawn Splash with open gambit or comeback, or just a pure movement, movement, you could, everyone could be putting on Ninja Squid to fight a charger or things like that. But there are definitely some other counter picks that we've been seeing like with this um, Zap Cooler meta. So as we talked about before, with the front lines being so flexible, I think there's a lot of options that we're not really considering yet. Like the matchups in the front lines aren't as, we're not as experienced in them. Like I don't know if I fought a Dually Sculpture, like I'm not super familiar with what I should do in that situation as a splash or if I'm fighting a 96 with a cooler or if I'm fighting a 96 without a cooler or if 
I'm fighting uh, Nautilus for the first time in this game or something like that. Now with the, the recent patch that we're in, with the uncertainty of the best composition or the best frontline weapons or whatever it may be, I think being able to have an idea of weapon matchups in general could like totally swing a specific set in a tournament or a scrim that you're having. If, if you're a team and you're struggling against a, a team who you view as you know, equal skill, you know, generally around the same skill as you, it's perfectly fine to change your weapon composition to beat them. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that you're lame for switching missiles when they're playing charger. It doesn't mean that you guys are worse because you had to switch off. I mean, these, these are things part of all competitive games that we see, um, which haven't really been like exacerbated in this game as much. But with like the lack of pure knowledge and experience on what these front lines can do, I really think it would be valuable. And that's all the time we got for for this part. You can find Fuzzy's links in the description below, and we'll cover more of this interview talking about stuff like what some of the best teams are doing wrong when they practice in part two.